welcome of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory be to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever in the ages of all ages, Amen. The Lord spoke about the kingdom being surely upon us. I don't know if you recognize this part. When they were debating with him about the whole idea of um, casting out demons by Beelzebub and casting out demons by this or by that, the Lord told him, if I'm casting out demons by the power of God, and surely the kingdom of God is upon you. I want you to think of this verse, because the Lord says, surely the kingdom of God is upon you. And he tells us, when he taught the disciples to pray, he said, thy kingdom come, was an essential part of the Lord's prayer, and continues to be so today, and will be so till the end of time. Thy kingdom come. And he said at that moment, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. If you are seeing God do these things, then the kingdom of God is upon you. Now if the kingdom of God is upon me, and I'm called as a Christian to pray that His kingdom come, and I pray this daily, multiple times a day, then I'm called to live according to this kingdom. Because even when He was being condemned for crucifixion, and then Pontius Pilate and others were challenging Him to prove Himself or come down from the cross or do this or do that. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. So as we spoke about this before, I'm sure you recall, if the kingdom of God is not of this world, and he says, surely my kingdom has come, then we are called to also live according to another kingdom, not according to the kingdom of this world, not according to the prince of this world, as the Lord has said and as the apostles emphasized in the epistles. So you'll notice also that Throughout the Gospels, throughout the preaching of John the Baptist, throughout the preaching of our Lord Jesus Christ, the focus and emphasis on the kingdom of heaven is at hand, or the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe in the Gospel, was regularly repeated and emphasized. The Lord wants us to focus on kingdom living. He wants us to focus that if I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God, if I'm a citizen of heaven, as St. Paul says, then we're also called to live according to that standard, that kingdom. So, if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Notice the emphasis on surely. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. In the Catholic epistle today, St. Peter tells us, you have the prophetic word confirmed. It has been confirmed. There's no doubts. If you're still wondering, then you need to get with the program. Because it has been confirmed a long time ago and fulfilled with the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as you know very well, He's coming again. When, we don't know. But that doesn't prevent us because we don't know when He's coming. That does not keep us from living according to that coming. The last words of our Lord Jesus Christ in red are in the book of Revelation chapter 22. Surely I'm coming quickly. The response of St. John the Beloved, Amen, even so come, Lord Jesus. This has been confirmed and said from a long time ago. When doesn't matter. What matters is how I'm living. Am I kingdom living or am I earthly living? I have to choose. And I can't make this choice the day of the second coming. I have to make this choice now. I may have not made it yet and I'm behind, but it's not too late. That, this is the good thing. This is the good thing that we have. So you have to recognize the king. Every one of us knows and we hope that we know the Lord Jesus Christ. And we say, Lord, grant us to know you. And this is his greatest prayer for us. Before his agony, before the arrest, before the crucifixion in Gethsemane, he said, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So recognize this. Look for Jesus don't just look for the signs of the times. And too many people fall in this trap. They look for the signs of the times. They look for the end of time. They look for the second coming. But they're not necessarily looking for Jesus. I'd like to emphasize to you today and every day of our lives, look for Jesus. Look for the King. Everything else is superfluous or details. Focus on the coming of Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. That's why St. John again in Revelation didn't say, let us know when. He said, come Lord Jesus. He didn't say, come end of time. He didn't say, come day of judgment. He didn't say, come this and that. He said, come Lord Jesus. You and I need to think this way. 
This is having or developing over time the mind of Christ. Focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Recognize your king. Look for him and seek him from all your heart. When you look at Joseph of Arimathea, after the Lord was crucified and rose and that it says, Now behold, there was a man named Joseph, a council member, a good and just man. He had not consented to their decision and deed. He was from Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who himself was also waiting for the kingdom of God. Notice that part. He was waiting for the kingdom of God. This is what he was waiting for. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Notice the correlation between waiting for the kingdom of God and, and asking for the body of Jesus. You can do the same thing today and every day. When you come to church and you prepare yourself to receive the body and blood of the Lord, you're asking for the body of Jesus. So wait for the kingdom and ask for his body. Wait for the kingdom, seek Jesus. Wait for the kingdom, recognize your king. This is what we're called to do. This man had every opportunity and every way to fall short of this understanding. This man could have very easily been caught up like many other council members and scribes and Pharisees who, due to the pressure around them, loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. And because they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God, they were no longer focused on kingdom living. They were no longer focused on Jesus coming back or on Jesus coming or the, the prophecies that they had memorized verbatim. They had no longer realized that this prophecy, these words will be fulfilled in their time. They lost track of that. Joseph did not. Joseph was able to prepare himself for the kingdom. He was waiting for this kingdom. And as he waited for this kingdom, he asked for the body of Jesus. While others were seeking to make sure Jesus doesn't rise from the dead. While others were seeking to make sure that the stone around the tomb was sealed properly so there is no possibility of tricks by the disciples stealing his body and whatever other foolish plots they had planned against God. Surely they were all vain, weren't they? So Joseph is a great example of that. To, regardless of what's happening around us, to focus on the king. Wait for the kingdom, ask for the body of Jesus. Do you not know that you are a temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? When the Lord said, if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, then whatever. But if I'm casting out demons by the Spirit of God, then surely the kingdom has come upon you. So again, bringing me back to the idea of kingdom living. That if truly the kingdom of God has come upon me, truly, then I ought to live according to that kingdom. And I ought to remind myself that if I'm according to that kingdom, then I myself am a temple of that spirit given to me in baptism. How many of you realize your value in Christ? How many of you remind yourself daily, every morning, that you had received the Holy Spirit in baptism? This is an essential part of kingdom living. Just as Joseph did. The big difference between Joseph of Arimathea and myself is that he did not receive the Holy Spirit at that time. And yet, he had taken extreme lengths to prepare himself that while he was reading whatever he was reading and hearing whatever he was hearing, he kept his eyes and his heart focused on the kingdom and he kept his eyes and heart focused on Jesus. This is something you can do and I can do. But it's a simple matter of choice. If the temple, if I'm the temple of God, if the Spirit of God dwells in me, St. Paul is telling me this in question form. Why? Notice how St. Paul is not saying this to me as an FYI. St. Paul is not telling this to me as for your information. You're the temple of God. No, he said, do you not realize? Do you not understand your value? Do you, have you not yet grasped? Isaiah said, have you not seen? Have you not heard? Has it not entered in your mind and your heart yet? That you are very valuable. You are of more value than many sparrows and many pieces of hair from someone's scalp. If you are of this value and understand it, question mark, St. Paul is telling you, then live according to this spirit. Live according to this kingdom. Don't live for less and under that because otherwise you'll fall short of kingdom living. That's why the Lord tells us, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. 
Seek Jesus' righteousness in everything you say, everything you do, everything you think, all your intentions, the depths of your heart. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. St. Paul tells us in Romans 14, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. This is the kingdom of God. When the Lord said in the gospel, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you, then the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Then you are now, and as we spoke during Pentecost last week, the God who loves you has given you His Spirit to dwell in you. This is the kingdom of God. So eating, drinking, everything else that has to do with this temporal life is temporal. You who are a temple of the Spirit of God, who is called to live forever, why would you live and focus your attention on the temporary? Why? Doesn't make sense, does it? And yet we do it all the time. But the Lord, again, the invitation to kingdom living is open 24 hours a day. That's why He says, do not resist the Holy Spirit. Don't blaspheme against the Spirit. That's the only thing that won't be forgiven, simply because blasphemy against the Spirit is resistance to the last breath till I die physically, when there is no more chance for repentance. But the repentance chance is here and now. And that's why St. Paul tells you, do not harden your heart. Today, if you hear His voice, don't harden your heart. If you heard His voice today, react today. Respond today. Don't wait till tomorrow. No one knows if tomorrow is coming. But we know that we have now. So let us use now to its fullest potential. St. Paul lived according to that too and explains that by saying, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. This is kingdom living. Complete Christ-centeredness. Focusing on Christ, not on signs and times and prophetic words, but focusing on Christ through all these things. Where is Christ in these things? This is what St. Paul is doing here, as you see in Galatians 2. And realizing by doing that, you are very loved. You are greatly loved by Christ. So when you say, Thy kingdom come, every time you pray the Lord's Prayer, understand what you are saying. You're not saying, Okay, Thy kingdom come, and glory be to God forever. You're saying, Thy kingdom come, because you're hastening the coming of the Lord. Because you're saying, Lord, surely... I, I want you to come quickly. That's why St. Peter tells us what manner of persons ought you to be, ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, being temples of the Holy Spirit, looking for and hastening, rushing the coming of the day of God. You want Him to come, you want the, the second coming, you want His kingdom to come, and then live according to that kingdom. Otherwise, we are just repeating vain repetition as the heathen do. And the Lord told us, don't do that. You want to pray the Jesus Prayer a thousand times a day? You want to say the Lord's Prayer a million times a day? No problem. But make sure you're backing up what you're saying. That you mean what you're saying. Because this is what thy kingdom come is all about. This is what kingdom living is all about. So the Lord had warned in Matthew 21 saying, The kingdom of God will be given to a people who will bear the fruits of it. Who will produce its fruit. He said to them, those who denied Him, says, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a people who will bear the fruit of that kingdom. You understand again the ramifications of this verse. We're told by the Lord here, you are of the kingdom. The kingdom of God has come upon you. I have given you my spirit. The kingdom of God is upon you surely. Therefore bear the fruits worthy of it. Bear the type of fruits that you will find there that are only found there. That cannot be mixed with other unhealthy or un holy fruits according to this world's standards. So again, as we mentioned earlier, so many times throughout the Gospels and John the Baptist's preaching, the Lord's preaching, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the Gospel. The emphasis on the kingdom of God is at hand as we saw today in the Gospel. The Lord tells us in Luke 9, but Jesus told him, anyone who puts his hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom. If you're going to be Living in a wavery way, putting your hand on the plow but looking backwards, you're not fit. You have to get fit, get in shape for the kingdom, according to the kingdom's living. And then you're truly fit by focusing on Christ throughout the world and its precious. Just as Joseph 
of Arimathea did and the Lord told us in the Gospels. So as you know very well, better than me, the king is coming again. When does not matter. All these details again don't matter, but the king is coming. Recognize your king. So be like the wise men and recognize the signs of his arrival. Keep your eyes on his arrival, not the arrival of signs, the arrival of Jesus. Even though they were looking at a star or searching for a star, they were looking for Jesus. They weren't following the star to be good astrologers. They were following the star to get not to Bethlehem. It didn't matter if they got to Herod's castle or a manger. They were looking for Jesus, the king who is to come into the world. This is what they were looking for. Let's pray for one another that we may have this true desire for kingdom living, that we may not just be living our lives haphazardly and saying thy kingdom come for the sake of saying it, but saying it because we're hastening the coming of the Lord, because we know his kingdom is upon us. We know that he has given us of his spirit and he has sanctified us for him and we ought to live according to that standard because of his great love for us, as St. Paul told us in Galatians. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.